Welcome back to the third of three videos on complex powers and roots. Uh, this video I'm just going to do three more examples that I couldn't fit in the last video. So, here we go. Uh, we're first going to find the complex cube roots of negative 27i. Negative 27i is uh, expressed best in, you know, let's sketch it out actually. Uh, it would be down here. So it would have an angle of 3 pi over 2 and a radius of positive 27. We want the radius to be positive. So I'm looking for the complex cube roots. First when I see I'm looking for cube roots, I know I'm looking for three roots. That's important to know how many you're looking for. It also tells you uh, what you're going to be, be dividing by, right? Uh, so n is equal to 3 in this sense. All right. So if I'm looking for root 1, what do I do? Well, to find the first radius, I do the cube root of 27, and that's going to be not 9, but 3. So my radius is going to be 3. Um, it's That's because the number is 27, not because I'm doing a cube root, by the way. There's a lot of 3s in here, just, um, you know, that's a sort of a coincidence. Uh, theta of that root is going to be 3 pi over 2 divided by 3. Why am I doing that? Because I need an angle that when I cube it, I'm going to get 3 pi over 2. So I have to take that uh, original angle and divide it by 3 to kind of reverse the process. And when I do that, I get pi over 2. So complex root 1, I could write in polar form as 3 cosine of pi over 2 plus i sine of pi over 2. And uh, let's, I'm curious about the rectangular form for this one, so let's put it in there. Cosine of pi over 2 is 0, plus i sine of pi over 2 is... So that's going to be 3i. And you can even think about it. Does it make sense that 3i cubed is 27i? Yeah, it does, because 3i times 3i times 3i will be 27 times i squared times i. 27i squared would be negative 27. So 3i makes perfect sense here. That feels like a good solution. Okay, always good to check when you can. I'm afraid that the other roots will be a little more complicated. All right, for root number 2, it's going to have the same radius. I know that the radius will be 3 because the radius is always the same. Then for theta 2, I need to do 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi and then divide it by 3. So I'm finding a coterminal of 3 pi over 2 and then dividing it by 3. So the coterminal itself will be uh, 2 pi over, that's 4 pi over 2. So that's going to be 7 pi over 2 over 3, which is going to be 7 pi over 6. Hmm, okay. So that's a little strange. Um, but let's write it out. So complex root number 2 is going to be 3 cosine 7 pi over 6 plus i sine 7 pi over 6. So I'm going to highlight my results here. What do I want to do? So there's the first result. Here's the second result. And let's go ahead and find the third complex root. C3 will have a radius of 3, as before. To find the third angle, I need to do 3 pi over 2 plus 4 pi, and then take that number and divide that by 3. Um, so I could either go add 4 pi, or I could take uh, 7 pi over 2 and add um, 2 pi. I, I could I gotta do it either way. Um, 4 pi over 2 is like 8. 4 pi is like 8 pi over 2. So uh, that's going to be 11 pi over 2 over 3, which will be 11 pi over 6. And that's going to be the third angle. So complex root number 3 will be 3 cosine of 11 pi over 6 plus i sine 11 pi over 6. Boom. There's my results, and I also want to take a moment to plot these out in the complex plane. Uh, where can I do that? I'll zoom out a little bit and do it over here. 
Okay. Remember, in the last video, we closed by looking at some of the interesting symmetries. So, we have kind of a radius of 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. I can't fit 27i on there. That'd be way down here. 27i, not to scale, but everything else would be to scale. The first root we said was 3i. The other roots we didn't put in rectangular form, but I know that they're going to be at a radius of 3. So they're going to be kind of on this circle of radius 3 at an angle of 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. And it is true, when you look at it, that pi over 2, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6 are equally spaced around the circle. So I found the first root, uh, and then was able, and I, and I found all three roots this way, and I noticed that they have this kind of nice equal spacing of their 2 pi over 3 uh, units apart. So that's one symbol or signifier that I'm correct. And actually, if you want to know a trick, what you could have done is after finding 3i, you could have identified that 2 pi divided by 3 will be the spacing because I'm doing a cube root. And I could have just added 2 pi over 3 to each, uh, uh, to, to uh, pi over 2, and found the next angle, and then added 2 pi over 3 to that and found the third angle. Do I recommend that? No. That's kind of a cheat. It's not a cheat cheat, but it's, it's not really a, a straightforward way to do it. All right. Let's do uh, two problems from the book. So this is from our, our Blitzer textbook. Thank you, Bob Blitzer, for loaning us these problems. Um, and I chose these because they're both a little more complicated. Um, this one is in degrees, and it's not a unit circle angle. So we have 27 again, cosine 306 plus I sine 306 degrees. Now, I'm doing complex cube roots again. You'll notice that you, you often do cube roots and fourth roots. Um, you don't do much bigger than that because... The numbers just get really annoying, and when you have six solutions, if you're doing six the roots, it's just not very fun. Um, all right, so we are going to be able to do this really quickly now. I know that the radius of all roots will be the cube root, so I'm doing cube roots, of 27, which I know from the last problem is 3. So I'm just going to write that. Um, I know that 306 degrees is the theta. I'm going to speed this up even faster. Um, I'm going to do 306, and then I'm going to do 306 plus 360, and get 666, and plus 360 again, and get 1026. Then what I'm going to do is take each of those, and divide them by 3. That's 342 degrees. Need a calculator for that. That's uh, 222 degrees. And that, uh, I guess I should do that on the calculator, is 102 degrees. So I'm going to have three roots. Th uh, they'll all be at a radius of 3. That's going to be the angle of the first root. That's going to be the angle of the second root. That's going to be the angle of the third root. Notice how fast that is, especially with your calculator if you're not trying to do it by hand and you're not really trying to follow a formula. Yes, I'm using the formula, but am I writing out the whole formula every time? Nuh-uh, I'm just doing this in an organized way. All right, so then uh, complex root 1 is going to be 3 cosine of 102 plus I sine of 102 degrees, degrees, don't forget your degree symbols. Root 2 is 3, cosine 222 degrees, and C3 is 3, cosine 342 degrees plus I sine of 342 degrees. I also want to check one more thing, which is are these arranged equally around the complex plane? So 102, that's around here. 222 is a little bit past 180, and 
it's actually pretty close to 45, right? Because 45, like, you know, midway right between. So that's 222. 342 is almost over here at 360. And at least without a protractor, and it does appear that these are equally spaced around the plane, and they would all have a radius of 3. Uh, I didn't quite fit these to scale on the page, but they would all seem to have a radius of 3. There we go, that's a little better. Coming out, and uh, they're equally spaced. Mm, notice, by the way, uh, where's 306 degrees? That's like, that's like down here. So the original number had a root length of 27 and was at a, an angle of 306 degrees. So the original number or original angle doesn't come into this uh, sort of equal spacing. And also this is the first time where the equal spacing set of magic hasn't also coincided with an axis. So right in the, in the previous problem, uh, one of the roots was on an axis, but here when our original angle is something like 306, uh, and dividing it evenly doesn't land you on an axis, then none of the other roots are guaranteed to lie that way, um, which means each of these would have a pretty complicated, complex, and real, real part. Okay. Uh, now, I said before that we often do cube roots, we often do fourth roots, we don't often do fifth roots or sixth roots, but I thought we'd close today with another problem from our book and do some complex fifth roots. Okay, so when I look at this problem, the first thing I notice is that I'm, I'm computing a fifth root, so I have the idea that n is going to have to equal 5, um, and I should have 5 roots. So oh, in the end, this might take a little while, um, it's not going to be too bad, but we're going to have 5 total answers. Let me work up this number. I also notice that this is a more uh, difficult number. They're all complex numbers, and this is a more difficult number than the last ones. We're at negative 1 plus i. So this number looks like this. So this would have a radius of square root of 2, and it would have an angle of 3 pi over 4. I'm going to put this one back in radians. The last one was nice in degrees, uh, but I think our life, I think it's better to stay in radians. It's, it's a little more common here. So the first thing I note is that the radius of the root is going to be the fifth root of the square root of 2. Please don't leave your answer like this. I would leave my answer probably like this. I would write it as 2 to the 1 half to the 1 fifth or 2 to the 1 tenth is how I would probably uh, go about writing that out. Or if I wanted to be really fancy, I would write it as the tenth root of 2. Is that a nice number? Absolutely not. But I just know that, I do know that it's smaller than square root of 2. So the roots here are going to be closer in somewhere here than the original number, which does make sense. Okay, now let's find the angles. So right, the radius you find once, and it's true for all five roots. Let's find the angles. Uh, so I have 3 pi over 4. And then what I'm going to do is take that and divide that by 5. Why am I dividing by 5? Well, because I'm doing a fifth root. All right, so that ends up being 3 pi over 20, right? 4 times 5, and that doesn't actually reduce, so I'm just going to leave it as 3 pi over 20. And actually, uh, I'm going to do something completely different. I'm going to switch this problem into degrees, because as soon as I see that 3 pi over 20, I say, no way is that nice. But I know that if theta was in degrees, it would be 135 degrees. Specifically, numbers ending in 5 are really nice when you have to divide them by 5. So I'm going to write this as 135 degrees. Then I will divide that by 5, and I get 27. And that's a number I can work with. Now what I'm going to do is also list out the coterminals of uh, 135. I guess I should go back to my calculator and do 135 plus 360, 495. And can I just do it this way? Yes, I can. 855. Or 
1215 or 1575. And then I have to take all of those and divide all of those by 5. Um, that's going to get annoying. We get 315, 243, 855 divided by 5 is 171, and 495 divided by 5 is 99. And those are the uh, angles of the five roots. Basically, if you, if you imagine taking the fifth power of each of these, right, you'd be working backwards, you'd multiply them by 5, you would arrive at a coterminal of 135, uh, which would mean you're at the same spot on the complex plane, and so then you would be done. All right, so what are the f complex roots of negative 1 plus i? Uh, the fifth roots, well, uh, complex root 1 would be the tenth root of 2, cosine 27, plus i sine of 27, and so on. There they are, all are written for you. And uh, one more thing before I close, uh, we've, you know, we've got our answers, and they're in a perfectly valid polar form. One thing I wanted to check is, is are they equally spaced like I thought they would be? So 99 minus 27 gives me a spacing of 72 degrees apart. Um, I also happen to know, well, let's check uh, something else. Is 171 divided, uh, divided by, but minus 99. Oh, I could have done that in my head. That's also 72. So all of these roots are equally spaced all around the complex plane. Uh, you know, and, and in fact, if I did 360 divided by 5, what do I get? 72 because I have five roots and they should all be spaced around with equal spacing of 72 degrees. Um, which means, by the way, if I were to plot them out, right, the first one would be here at around 27, then they would kind of form a perfect little... That's not right. They would kind of form a perfect little pentagon, right? Of That's not a perfect pentagon, but I don't feel like drawing anything better. Um, they not make that nice little pentagon all around, and you could kind of get... Oh, I see that's wrong. That one's a little... That one should be right here. And you could, you know, really identify uh, how they look that way. Uh, even though 1 plus i itself is not a very nice number. All right, folks. So that is how I do complex roots, especially. Um, you know, you can use the formula. You can use that idea of working backwards. But frankly, when you're really doing complex roots, you kind of solve them in the same way that you solve the equation uh, sine of 5x equals 1 half or something, right? Whereas, uh, if you remember that from chapter 5, you solve the equation, you write the general form, and then you just divide all the results or all the coterminals by 5. That's kind of what's going on here. Not exactly, um, but I think that's probably the most efficient way. You can solve these in degrees or radians. You can leave your answers in polar form or rectangular form. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to simplify. Um, just, you know, write out your answer. Write out your answer in a nice way. All right, folks. Thank you for watching. I know this has been a long video. This is a really challenging topic. When we do this in class, it takes two or three days, and students that really want to understand it usually do come in for extra help. Um, but the best thing you can do is try problems. I know that in the process of recording these this hour of video, I feel like I've gotten better at doing complex roots. And so, you know, if you do the same, you probably will also get better at doing complex roots. Um, all right. Let me know what your questions you have. Do your homework. I'll see you next time.